All right, hello everyone. My name is Peter, and I hope you're all doing all right. In today's video, all I wanna do is look at some of the stuff I bought on a recent trip to Portland. I did that over spring break with, it was a, it was a school trip, and I did manage to stop by a couple of cool stores. Uh, one was the Muji store, of course, which was cool. I had never been uh, inside an actual Muji store before, and it so pained me that I wasn't able to buy more stuff because I could only carry home so much stuff because I just had like my one bag or a, like a backpack and a personal item, you know. But uh, like there were so many, like they, of course they sell like the pens and little you know, stationary products I like buying, but they sell all this other stuff too, you know, like housewares and clothes and stuff. So. I already have a few, like a, in the previous video, I might have saw that I had like a, have a Muji shirt and a Muji jacket and stuff that I like wearing, but they have tons of stuff. Anyways, it was cool. I'll show you what I got from there. And I also went to a, like a pen and stationery store called Oblation Papers and Press. Very cool. And I got some stuff there. Uh, so let's look at the Muji stuff first. I think that'll be slightly quicker. All right, first of all is... Uh, this pen right here, which I thought was pretty fun. I also um, got some other pens that I've shown in the video before, like I stocked up. I grabbed a bunch more of these little Muji ballpoint pens. I've used these in videos before. Um, I like these. They're just fun for kind of multi-purpose, all-purpose, very nice uh, gel pens by Muji, and they look cool too, like kind of frosted plastic look. I just noticed this has a, a crack in it right there, but it still works fine. Muji ballpoint. That's the point. I have had three cups of coffee this morning. Uh, so my handwriting, I feel like, is a little bit... Blah, blah, blah. Uh, ooh, speaking of coffee, I got a nice letter recently from someone named Winter. And in the letter, there's a to-do to, to list which says, drink coffee, smile, And create, all right, so I've done that, I've done that, and now it's maybe time to do a little bit of this creating. It says drink more coffee. To be honest, I think I already did the drink more coffee thing. Then it says stretch, all right. I do, I do do this fairly frequently. I mean, I'm only kind of stretching the kinks out of my upper body or whatever. I need to probably need to stretch my legs more. And then it says coffee again, which I'm a little bit afraid of. Maybe if I had three cups of coffee, it counts for all three coffees on here, but I'm afraid to drink coffee again until tomorrow. And then in here is just a nice little letter. Thank you, Winter, for this letter. She, she says she's getting into stickers, sticker doodles, and washi tape. Very cool. She says, random fact, I smell my pens now when I get them, and that's okay. It is okay. Thank you very much. Oh, but anyways, what was I saying? Yeah, we're looking at these Muji pens. Um, oh, I also stocked up on more, um, like this is one of my favorite fountain pens here, the Muji aluminum fountain pen, right? This is a classic. This is one of my uh, favorite ones just to carry with me in my pocket and use. Let's see if it writes after not using it for a, like a week or so. It's just been lying here on my desk. Oh, it works great. Muji fountain pen. I love this pen. I just I like I like the minimalistic the like the tube. I don't know. It's just it makes me happy for some reason. And of course, when I went, I've had this problem where it's sometimes like on Amazon and stuff. It seems a little bit hard to get a hold of this pen. Uh, like it the price goes up and down sometimes it comes in and out of stock But then when I was there in the actual Muji store, they just had like bins full of the pens So I just grabbed a handful I'd like to say I did this before panic buying was cool. Maybe this is just good old-fashioned doomsday prepping Not that I've ever actually had one of these pens give out on me mostly I just lose pens, but um Maybe I can figure out how to do a giveaway. I actually bought 12 of these, I think. 
two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. I was imagining on maybe keeping two for myself and then figuring out how to do a giveaway for all of you with these ten pens. But I haven't quite figured out the best way to do a giveaway that's simple and easy and fair uh, and random and you don't have to like sign up for stuff. So if any of y'all have um, good uh, suggestions on the best way to do a giveaway, especially when I'm giving away 10 things. Um, also, I would probably limit it to United States shipping, I don't think. I know this maybe sounds fair, but I don't think I would do international shipping for this just because it, it would like double the cost of each pen. You know, they're like $12 pens and then it costs 12 more dollars to do international shipping. I know that. I'm sorry if that seems selfish of me. If you live somewhere else in the world, I still love you, I promise. Even if I can't show it to you in this way, okay? Anyways, finally back to this pen. It says polycarbonate, six color hexa hex hexagonal, hexagonal pen. It says, please don't write upward. I don't know if I've ever seen that on a pen before but I guess it does go to show that there's a point in those space pens, you know? The ones that can write upside down. Now there is a little scuff here, which I might not have noticed when I was buying it, or maybe that's happened since I bought it, but it's, it doesn't seem to come off very easily. You've got six colors here. The first one, black, is on the pen clip, right? It pops out the bottom. And then as you press the next one, it's supposed to make the black clip go back up. It's being a little stubborn right now, though. There you go. Then you push down the red one. I've got pink, uh, yellow, or orange here. Light blue and dark blue. Interesting. I never knew one of these pens that had two shades of blue on it. Muji hexagonal. How do you say it? Hexagonal. Let's try the red. This one seems a little bit stubborn. It's a nice shade of red though. Really nice. Pink. Come on, pink. You can do it. I believe in you, Pink. There we are. I think. Pink. A little bit sluggish there, but I think it's just... Just gotta get started. A nice shade of pink, also. Get a closer look there. Red, the pink. Orange. The orange is a little light, for my liking. But maybe that's just the nature of the color. Uh, I mean, it's okay. I could just do something a little bit, a little bit darker, or just a little bit less transparent looking, right? Light blue. That one started immediately. Light blue. I like that shade of blue. Let's see how it compares to this other blue. dark blue. This feels like a more classic blue ballpoint pen color, right? But maybe not exactly, but closer. It's dark blue, and finally, oh, that's all of them. Back to black. Nice. So there's the six colors in there. I could try making a drawing with this with all six colors later. I might do that and include it in the video. I might not. This is already going to be a long video after I... I mean, I'm, I'm going to review another pen here in a second. Wait, let me let me show you the little... I got some stationery at the Muji, Muji store also. Oh wait, some of this I got at the next door, the Oblation Papers place. I got just, I think, a, I think this is the only stationery I got there, just a little Muji sketchbook. Uh, just very plain, untreated paper, cardstock here on the outside and inside. Once again, still very plain. 
And I'm, I wonder if I can write on this with, you know, with like a fountain pen. It's one of those things where I want to try writing on it with a fountain pen. But if I do try and it starts bleeding, then I feel like I've message, messed up the whole sketchbook because I want each sketchbook to kind of be one medium in my mind. Like I don't want to, I don't want to have like one little mark here where I tested the pen and then the rest of it be something else. But I, I should stop being such a control freak about. I don't know. The paper does seem a little thin though, but I like it. I just like the feel of it, the minimalisticness, minimal, minimalism of it. So as you can see, I did end up doing a drawing with the hexagonal pen in the Muji notebook. Uh, a good a good pair, a good matchup. They went well together at first with me and this pen. It was a real will they, won't they sort of relationship. I just kind of wanted the pen to add to my Muji collection, to be honest. But once I started using it, I mean, anyone here who's watched uh, any number of videos from me will know that I don't use color very often. And so, of course, I'm not as comfortable with it, but it turned out to be really fun. I also will say that this is this is one of those drawings where I, th deep down in my heart, I think I might have overdrawn it. And by that, I mean, I, as I was looking back through it and editing this video here the next day, um, I saw a couple points in the drawing. When I like the drawing a little bit more uh, than I like the drawing at the end state. I mean, it still look, turned out looking pretty cool, but uh, that's just why you have to draw some more. And, you know, people ask me, you know, how, how do I know when, when to stop drawing? I don't always know when to stop drawing. Sometimes I keep drawing for far too long and sometimes I don't draw long enough. It's just one of those things that it's a, it's a gut feeling that you get more and more comfortable with over time. But I do look forward. I think I do want to try some more multicolored scribbles with this pen or with other multiple colors because, uh, I don't know, is it weird to say I inspired myself a little bit? I think I did. All right, so switching over to the next place, I went to the Oblation Papers and Press thing, place, Paper, oblation papers and press place store and uh another place i wish i could have spent way longer in but i was there with some friends and you know it's like when you're at a place you ever done that you're like somewhere you're really enjoying but then your, your friends are just kind of tagging along like they're i think some of my friends bought some stuff there too but they weren't uh like uh, like so enthralled by it as I was. So in the back of my mind, I'm like, uh, gotta make it quick, gotta try to see everything because I know I can't really spend an hour here even though I want to, you know. But there was a very helpful um, sales uh, person there. Kelly helped me. She gave me her business card. I think that's it there. Thank you for the help finding stuff there, Kelly. At Kelly Love Letters on Instagram. Check her out. Thank you for the help. And I'm going to start with the stationery I got there because then I can review the pen and then go straight into doing some drawing. Um, first, I got two of these Robiki note things, which they're kind of a very strange aspect ratio of sketchbook, notebook. But I think um, somewhere around here I have what is it's called like a like a journal travel notebook, but it's like a leather kind of a leather wallet that you can put around this style of sketchbook. And uh, then you, there's all sorts of companies that make this shape of sketchbook. You can just kind of keep switching them in and out. There's like, it's like a leather wallet. At least the one I have is made out of leather. I think I bought it when I went on a trip to New York once at some weird uh, hipstery bookstore in Brooklyn or something, you know? And yeah, it's like a leather, a pretty, pretty much just a piece of folded leather with a string down the middle that you can tuck this into. And then you have like a little leather bound sketchbook that you can keep switching these in and out of. It's a pretty cool idea, but I don't know where my leather thing is, but I guess this, these are nice because you can tuck them into a breast pocket if you have it, you know, inside of your jacket or maybe they could fit in a back pocket, but they're a little tall for that unless you're wearing Jinkos, right? I just like the, uh, the grid on this paper is really cool. You know, it's got like, I think these are one inch squares. Yeah, one inch squares, which I've, I'm guessing they do primarily for the American market, right? Because we're pretty much the only place that it uses. Wait a second. It says four, it says 4.5 millimeter reticle squared. Wait, it says squared. 
I forgot an A. Anyways, wait, 4.5 millimeters. Where's my shorter ruler? Is it really one inch? Oh, it's not even one inch. I was totally, I didn't even look closely. It's not even, <laughs> I just like looked at it and assumed it was an inch, but it's not at all. Each tiny square is, is 4.5 millimeters, but why is that? So, it seems like a strange arbitrary scale. So I don't know why exactly they're 4.5 millimeters, uh, but like these squares are like 22.5 millimeters apart. What is the significance of that? I don't know. And here, this other one also has a cool grid in it. Look, in this one, they spelled squared right. Two millimeters squared, 4.5 millimeter reticle squared. Maybe they ran out of space or something in their template. But it also has a nice, very fine little grid. I don't usually draw or sketch on grid papers, but there is something about them. I just really like looking at the grids. <laughs> so I don't know why I bought these, except that I like the aesthetic of them, I guess. I they got me, okay? I'm a sucker. Ooh, and then I got this little guy, which just is like a tiny, pristine little... Uh, Sketchbook. This says sketchbook there, kind of embossed on the front in gold letters. Look at that. It glistens. And, um, once again, <laughs> graph paper. This one's a lot smoother. Looks like looks like three millimeter squares, or maybe. It's pretty close to quarter inch. It might be quarter inch. I don't know. Maybe quarter inch and three millimeter are pretty much identical. Please don't leave a weird sticky spot when I peel this off. Okay, it says proudly made in Japan by Tristrams. Anyways, I thought this little, I thought it was cute, so I bought it. I don't know. I like, it just, it feels nice to hold. It's very thin. It's very thin. Uh, Who knows? Anyways, okay, coming down to it. And then I got five piston converters, con converters by Kaweco, Kaweco, Kaweco. Standard converters, hopefully I can use these in a bunch of other pens as I need them. I just like knowing that I have these uh, in the back of my, you know, when I need them. Uh, sometimes, I don't know, it's just nice to have these because I keep, I have a lot of pens and it's just more, more doomsday prepping, you know. And I like Caveco. I think I'm going to start saying Caveco. I've been saying Kaweco for a long time, but I feel like Caveco is a lot closer to the correct and intended pronunciation. So will you s support me in this endeavor to say Caveco instead? And I don't know, I feel like I'm saying it weird, but it also has to be correct. All right, here's the pen, guys. Another Caveco pen. And I don't re really remember exactly what the model is called. I just remember that I picked it. It's like one of the first times I've gone to like a pen store and looked at all the pens under the glass, the glass counter, you know, I was like a kid, like pushing, pushing my face up against it. Like, ooh, look at that one, look at that one. And I just picked one out and bought it, right? So I remember what it looks like. I just don't remember the name <laughs> the name of it because I didn't, didn't online shop for it, you know? All right, here we are. Here it is. Wait, does this have the name of it in here? I think I think she said the box doesn't have the tag on it because um, like she hadn't put the tag on it with the name of the pen yet because they had just put it out. All right here it is. It's once again I'm obsessed with both uh, metal and very like minimalistic pens. You know, less is more sort of thing. Kind of the opposite of my actual drawings. Here on the lid, it's like laser engraved. It says Caveco. You can see that there are a couple points here where it can, uh, where it's the different parts as it comes apart. All right, I am unscrewing the cap now. Oh, and there it is. 
a pretty standard looking uh, pen nib as far as Kavecos go. Like it looks like the pen nib on my Kaveco Sport, except that it actually, <laughs> now they hold them next to each other, they're a lot different. This one's like twice as big and it's silver colored and this one is smaller and gold colored. This one says EF on it and this one just says F, extra fine, fine, first to the nib. The same kind of general little scroll work details up there. It says Germany. I think it says, if I can see that right, it says since 1883 right there. All right, I'm going to put the lid right there. And then this can keep on, on unscrewing a little bit more. Another pen that I think I like because I know it'll be fun to play with, right? Can unscrew it like that. And then you can unscrew this part also. I'm going to take this uh, empty cartridge out. Get one of my converters. Pop it in there. Very nice. So you just twist it and it goes up and down to suck the ink in and out. And then you know, if you didn't have this long piston in there, you could just put this part right on the back uh, without this middle piece. Like if you're just using the uh, cartridge, this could become a much shorter pen if you wanted it to be. The cartridge that I just took out, the little thing, uh, would still fit in there. And the pen would get that much shorter. Looks like a time capsule. But I need the full extended length since I'm using a piston converter in here. Right, and then I got some ink too, at the uh, at the pen store, they had like this this notebook. It was just like a, just like one of those uh, composition notebooks, you know. It's, it's got like lined paper, but in it they had like you could flip through it, and they had all these swatches of ink. They wrote write out the ink with the ink, and then they would like uh, brush on a like a swath of it, right? So you could see what the ink looked like. And I looked through it, and it seemed like the darkest blackest ink with the least amount of sheen or shimmer. I just wanted something that just like sinks into the paper. As far as I could tell, the darkest, deepest black uh, was this Twisby ink. So I grabbed uh, a bottle of it. It's called Twisby Black, I think. So this is what we're going to put in this pen. Twisby ink in a Caveco pen. And that kind of reminds me of this last Moon Man we looked at in a previous video because this Moon Man really is kind of like uh, this Twisby Eco and this Caveco. Did I say Caveco again earlier? It looks like these two pens were combined into this pen. In fact, look, this piston filler uh, assemblies look exactly the same while these lids look almost exactly the same. Anyways, I, I hadn't actually, I think in the back of my mind I noticed those two look so similar, but it wasn't until some people in chat mentioned it that I thought to put these right next to each other and look at that. Pretty, pretty close. Of course, the Twisby comes with a little bottle of like grease or oil for this piston system and like a little wrench and stuff. So it's a very nice choice, the Twisby. You feel, you feel a little bit pampered when you buy that. Comes with all the little extras, right? Anyways, we're talking about this Caveco, and here's the bottle of ink. All right, I love how it looks, actually. It has the same logo on top that the uh, Twisby Eco does. And I just love this frosted glass look. To be honest, it reminds me of the, you know, the Muji pens. Look at that. It's nice and cold to the touch glass, and I like this kind of ruby lid. There are a lot of nice ink bottles out there that just make you want to, you know, people are good at branding and making their art supplies so that you want to get going sometimes. That's sometimes the power 
buy new art supplies. You just want to use them. Anyways, let's crack this open. And of course, it did come with uh, this little guy, which is a little insert you can put down in the bottle. I've also seen this with uh, my carbon ink, which I use in the Muji pens. Platinum, platinum carbon. I think it's so that you can, maybe when the ink gets lower, when there's less ink in the bottle, you can like turn it over or fill, turn, put this in there, close the bottle and then go like this maybe. In some way, it, it'll make it easier to fill up the pen when there's less ink in the bottle. Is that correct? Is it? I couldn't tell if it's so that you don't bump your pen against the glass maybe, but in some way, this aids with the ink filling process, even though I haven't had a lot of pr problems with ink filling. But then again, I haven't ever really totally used up a bottle of ink because I keep buying so many new bottles. Or I don't mind buying a new bottle before I really should, maybe. I don't know. Tell me what this does. So our bottle of ink. We're going to screw uh, the piston down all the way so that we can raise it up once we've submerged the tip. By the way, before I post this video, I will figure out what this pen is called, and I'll put the I'll put it in the description of the video if you want to look it up. I'll put a link to it somewhere, maybe on the Caveco website. All right here we go. I don't know if this ink is waterproof like the platinum carbon ink I've been using before, but that doesn't actually. Uh, concern me most of the time. I just really tried out the platinum carbon ink initially because I wanted to try combining watercolor with my drawings. Watercoloring on top of it, because if you watercolor on top of a lot of fountain pen inks, you know they'll get washed away. All right, it's filled up, cleaned up, cleaned off, cleaned up. Let's put the put the back back on it. Here's the lid which does the ultimate form of posting, which is screwing on the back. That's, that's a well-posted pen right there. Yeah, nice and long, not too heavy. It's definitely got some weight to it, but it's not overpowering. You can always, you know, not post it also. And it feels okay like that too. It's not too short. I still feel like I might have been saying Kawiko a lot. Kaweco. Pen. It's definitely, it's, it flows very smoothly, like across the paper. It feels kind of buttery. It's amazing how, how different the sensation of drawing can be with different pens. Like, you know, for some reason I thought with various, with, within one brand maybe, like all their nibs would kind of feel the same, and maybe it's just the variation between the EF and the F nib. Let me try the Kawiko Sport real quick. No, because this feels so much more scratchy and it's sharp, which I love in a totally different way. I adore that feeling because it's, you feel almost, it's like what you might imagine like a, like a feather quill I feel like you, it's different. It, it, they're all beautiful in different ways. I love it. This is doling out the ink like nobody's business. Oh, I like this pen. Pretty nice, right? I feel like I'm definitely going through a phase right now. What will the next pen phase for me be? Highly ornamented ones. I feel like I'll, I'll swing to the other side of the spectrum from the like the sleek minimalistic ones, and then I'll start getting the ones with like un unironically like this one, you know, or something like that. I don't know. I'm excited to see. Anyways, uh, I'm gonna do some drawing with this. I don't know what I'm gonna draw. And yeah. It's good to hang out with y'all. All right, so for this drawing, I pulled out one of the Robiki Note uh, sketchbooks or notebooks and I like the one with the little kind of red crosses the little crosshairs 
in the middle of the grids, the one that's 4.5 millimeter squared. And it worked well. Like I tested it out a little bit and there is a little bit of bleeding, which was regrettable, uh, but I was mentally committed already. So I just went for it. Also, I enjoyed this more vertical format. Uh, it worked really well for this. I will say that with this combination of paper and ink, which I think is usually the two factors you need to take into consideration when you're talking about smudging, which is what I'm talking about, uh, with this paper and ink, I didn't encounter any smudging at all. And I do encounter smudging sometimes with this sort of drawing, that the, with, well, with all my ink drawing. It's just a thing that happens sometimes, and I think mentally uh, I'm usually okay with it unless it happens, unless it like doesn't happen, and then it happens near the end of a drawing, which was pristine for hours as I worked on it, right? Um, anyways, there was no smudging this time, and I think that was partly because of the vertical format. This meant that I could draw all the way up and down the paper without really having to rest my hand on top of any ink at all. Uh, just, just kind of just up and down, right? And then I switched over to the other, other side of the notebook and did the same thing, and it all just worked really well, and I was happy with it. I did end up taking... Uh, I, I didn't leave the pen cap on the end of the pen uh, at all because after I drew for a few minutes, it did start to feel too heavy. And that's another thing I was thinking about this pen since it's made out of stainless steel, I think. Oh, by the way, this is, I'm sure I've put it in the description in the title of the video already, but it is the Caveco Supra. That's the name of the pen. I've looked it up now and I should have known because I looked a little bit closer on the pen itself and it actually says... Caveco, and then it says Supra, and it says Germany on it. So, I mean, it is there on the pen in very fine writing, which I didn't see in my first examination of the pen. But but I was saying, since it's stainless steel, like I mentioned, it is a little bit heavier, and I'm a little bit skeptical about how it would feel in your pocket. I mean, I tend to put a lot of stuff in my pockets. Uh, for most of last all last semester, I had in in, in my left pocket... I would have my car keys, I would have my Muji aluminum fountain pen, I would have two metal lead holders, a Koenor one and a Rotring one, and sometimes some other pen, and I would have my earbuds in there. I mean, that's just a lot for one pocket, and I feel like all that stuff together would add up to weigh about the same as this one pen, which is probably not correct, but you know how it feels when you're walking around with a bunch of heavy stuff in your pocket, it just kind of weighs you down. Um, so I'm just like the, the, the Muji fountain pen feels great in your pocket cause it's made out of aluminum and it's not that heavy, but it is stainless steel and it would do fine in your pocket, banging up against your keys and stuff. In fact, I think that's kind of cool. I like that feeling of like my, my two lead holders, uh, they ha kind of have some scuffs and wear marks on them, uh, from being, you know, in my hand on my desk, in my pocket with my keys it feels like it kind of personalizes them a little bit for me, which I something I mentioned before, but I really do like that aspect of it. Of course, these days I'm not really going places with my pens, but looking forward to the, the bright future where once again I can venture out my pens stuffed, I mean my pockets stuffed with pens and all sorts of other things. I think I could try putting this in my pocket. This is another pen, however, that can roll around on your desk very easily. You can put it on your desk or even put the, the, the pen lid down and you find out very quickly whether your desk is perfectly level or not. And my, my desk isn't, I think, or some part of, I don't know. You, could, you can put it down laterally or horizontally. Or, I don't even know what I'm talking about anymore, but you get the idea. It worked pretty good. I like the drawing. The graph paper worked well. I used it to do a little frame around it, around everything at the end. I've used this pen again. I'm glad to add it to my collection. It what it is, I think it is like $120 though, depending on where you buy it from. You can probably get either better or worse details. You know, do your own research on stuff that I recommend, of course. Um, do your own research, do due diligence and everything, but um, yeah, it's cool. It's sleek, metal. It's something I like.
I'm not saying it's the best pen ever, but I don't know if I have any pens that I would call the best pen ever, just pens I like, more or less. Anyways, I'm going to go now. I know this is another video with um, just a lot of sitting around talking about pens, less drawing, more unboxing and chit-chatting and stuff, but I um, hope you don't mind. Hope you enjoyed yourself, and I'll see you later, okay? Okay. All right, bye.